Okay, welcome back everybody to video 11 in the HQ Lab series. Uh, apologies for anyone who's been following along with these, this video set. Uh, I haven't done a video in probably 10 days now. I've uh, been busy with work and I had uh, had COVID just over a week ago. Uh, nothing, nothing really bad, but I was just a bit tired, so wasn't really in the mood for making videos. Okay, so this video today, we are going to be creating a VPN from our FTDs in the HQ over to the ASA and our remote site. So let's get cracking with that. We'll do the FTDs first. Okay, it's a nice, healthy FTD. That's good. Uh, so we'll pop over to devices and site to site. We will add a new firepower threat defense device. We will call this remote, okay, remote site to site. Uh, we will go with Ike version one. So due to us running uh, an ASA, uh, an old ASA on evaluation license, we are limited in the encryption algorithms that we can use. Um, so this wouldn't be uh, anything like what I would advise to set up a VPN in a production environment, but you know we're limited by the uh, what we're capable of in our lab. So uh, yeah, our node A device is going to be our HQ HA cluster. We're going to build it on the outside interface, and we can see that's populated with the right address there, eleven 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 one. We want it to be bi-directional. We're not using a certificate. And we will tell it that we want to protect the networks on node A of the HQ summary address, which is 10.11.0.0 slash 16. We'll click OK on that. And we will set up node B, which is going to be our Cisco ASA. So device for this will be an extra net device. Uh, we'll call this remote ASA. <clears throat> IP address will be 12.12.12. Uh, not actually on there, it'll be 12.2. And the subnet that will be protected behind that firewall We've already created the object, it's here, and that is 10.12.128.0/24, and we can see on the drawing that is correct. So we'll go ahead and we'll add that to our protected networks. We'll click OK on that. We will have a look at our Ike settings. And we will change this to pre-shared sure des Diffie Hellman group five. So policy number 160. So unfortunately, this is what we're limited to on the ASA. So we just need to make it match on this side. Uh, we will tell it that we want to use a pre-shared key, but we want to define it. And we'll use Cisco 123 with a capital C. Again, would recommend a much stronger pre-shared key in a production environment. Okay, we'll hop over to the IPsec settings. Um, we can see we are in tunnel mode. We're using DES and SHA, uh, which is perfectly fine for this VPN. We're not going to use uh, perfect forward secrecy. Uh, we will change our timeout to 3600. For one hour. We'll hop over and have a look at the advanced settings, see if there's anything we want to change on there. So keep alive, the fine as they are. It's X fine. Okay, that's fine. We will save that there. So that's our tunnel setup. We have two more elements that we need to set up as well. 
So the first one being we need to set up a policy to allow the traffic. So if we have a look at our HQHA policy, we'll have a look down the list. So we are interested in inside to outside and outside to inside. So we already have a rule here, inside to outside, any, any. So we'll go ahead and we'll add a rule. Um, <clears throat> in fact, we'll leave that in place. We, we generally want to allow traffic to go from the inside to the outside. Uh, our next lot of rules that we're interested in would be outside to inside. OK, and we can see we just have one rule there and it's a it's a deny any any. So that is rule seven. So we want to create a rule, pop it above rule seven to allow the remote site traffic into the HQ. We'll call it site to site. Allow. We want to insert it above. Rule seven. Uh, we want to allow it, that's fine. And we want to say it's going to come from the outside zone to the inside zone. We'll specify the networks that we want to allow. The HQ summary we know is going to be the destination. We'll add that in there. And our remote site one subnet will be our source. So that's the 10.12.128. Yep. Yeah, dot zero slash twenty-four to the ten dot eleven um, slash sixteen network. We will add that. We will save that. And then we'll pop over to devices and we'll do the last bit of the config, which is NAT. So we'll edit our NAT, po NAT policy. And we, well, what we want to do here is we want to say identify this traffic and, and actually don't NAT it or, or no NAT him. We use the proper term. So we have production to outside, inside to outside. OK, so we want to add this above rule two to make sure that we don't NAT anything um, with this less specific rule. The manual NAT rule, yeah. Uh, insert above rule two. Static NAT is fine. And we are coming from the inside to the outside. And we want to say if you're coming from HQ summary, translate to HQ summary. Now, this is just a way of saying don't NAT. Yeah, so if you're going to the remote site, translate to the remote site. And we want to allow it for all ports. Um, so we'll just OK on that. We will save our changes. And we'll click deploy. We'll have a quick look at the rules just to make sure what we're expecting is in there. Yeah, so our site, site tunnel, our NAT rules, and our policy. We'll hit deploy on that. We'll say, yeah, sure, we want to go ahead. There's a warning about uh, deprecated Diffie Hellman group rules. Uh, we know about that. Uh, it will allow it. It's just a warning to say that in future versions, um, these won't be allowed. We'll click deploy. 
we will hop on over to our ASO and we'll just get a general feel for our setup. So if we pop to device setup and go to interfaces. Yep, so we got our inside interface 10.12.128.1. Yep, our outside interface of 12.12.12.2, .12 which is good. That's where we pointed our VPN at. We have a static root, a static default root pointing to 12.12.12.1. That's right. I think we're good to go ahead and configure our VPN. So in the configuration tab, we'll come down, we'll go to site to site VPN, go to connection profiles. We will first of all uh, allow Ike version one on the outside interface. That's where we're building our tunnel to. Um, we will go ahead and add a new connection profile. We want to build it to 11.11.11.1. .11 we will keep the connection name just as the IP address. Um, in a production environment, you might want to label that with whatever your device name is on the other end. Interface outside, that's correct. Our local network is going to be, yep, this one here, inside 10.12.128.0. Our remote network is going to be 10.11.0.0 slash 16. Uh, a group policy. We will add a new group policy. Let's use the default one. We'll say that our tunneling, tunneling protocols, we only want to use Ike version 1. Uh, what we'll call this HQ policy. Select OK on that. We'll turn off Ike version 2. We'll input our pre shared key of Cisco 123. Our Ike policy. We will look to see if the policy that we want to use is in there. <clears throat> so we are looking for Des, Shaw, and Diffie Hellman Group 5, which there is not one. These are the only two Des policies we got. So we'll go ahead and we'll create one. Policy number one, pre shared key, that's fine. We want to choose Des <coughs> for encryption. Diffie Hellman Group 5. Oh, for the hash, <clears throat> and I believe we set the time to 3600. We'll OK that. Yep, that's policy number one, so it should try that one first. Uh, we will go to our accept proposal. And again, we are looking for Des Shaw in tunnel mode. Okay, let's take a look at that. Okay, that looks to be the one we are after. So we'll get rid of all of them and we'll double click on Des Shaw in tunnel mode. We'll OK that. We'll have a look under our advanced option, options. Our crypto map entry. Perfect forward secrecy off, which is what we want. We don't need NAT-T because we're not behind a NAT device. Uh, our tunnel time was one hour. Bidirectional, what we want main mode it's perfect tunnel group settings keep the lives are fine we'll okay that uh, we'll apply that here 
Yeah, for anyone who's not aware of this, uh, we'll just send them commands. Um, so this window here allows you to view the commands before you send them to the device. Um, can be quite handy if uh, you're not actually wanting to send them. You can just configure this stuff here, copy the commands and cancel the change. Um, also good if you want to just get uh, more familiar with the CLI. You can look at the commands before you send them via ASDM. So you go to tools and preferences and it is here under communications preview commands before sending them to the device. We have that enabled. It's not enabled by default. OK, so same as we did on the firepower, we now need to go and create our uh, policy rules and our NAT rules. So access rules inside. Uh, 10.12.128. Yeah, our inside network. Go into our HQ, summary address, all protocols, permit. Perfect. And we'll do one coming the other way. So from the outside, uh, permit again, and just the opposite way. So from the HQ summary address to our inside network again all protocols we'll okay that perfect we'll go over to our NAT rules and we will add one <clears throat> and same as we did on the firepower we effectively want to say uh, no NAT so from inside to outside address of the inside network destination address of the HQ network and we'll leave the source and destination translated address as original so again just say no NAT uh, we'll make sure that it's enabled and we'll make sure that the direction is both. We'll click OK on that. We'll click Apply. And now we can see our access rules and our NAT rules in CLI format. We'll send that to the device. And just while that's sending, we'll go back to our firepowers and we can see that our config deployed successfully. So we'll hop on over to our virtual PC on the remote network and see if we can ping over into our HQ network. OK, so for this then, we are going to ping. Um, have a look at our topology. So all of the network isn't up. Um, we're only allowing from the remote site into in fact, everywhere. Uh, but what we're going to ping is we're just going to ping our call switch here, which is 10.11.0.1. OK, well, yep, yeah, drop the first one because the VPN tunnel wasn't up. Uh, but the last four were successful. OK, so let's just double check that. So we'll have a look on our ASA. We will go to monitor. We will go to VPN and there we have it. OK, we can see that the connection profile 11.11.11.1 .11 is up and has been up for 19 seconds and sent and received 336 bytes. So a refresh. Yeah, no more traffic, but yeah, it's been up for 36 seconds now. We'll pop on over to the firepower. We'll go to our health monitor and we'll look under events. And 
we'll just order the module name. Hopefully the VPN status will come out on top. Yeah, there we go. So we can click on this. this just lets us know as of 1225 uh, our VPN is up and we only have one VPN so we don't really do any, need to do any more digging on that okay so there we have it that is a VPN setup from a Cisco ASA at our remote site into our uh, Cisco Firepowers at our HQ site hopefully that's been of some use to you if it has please like share subscribe and thank you for watching